Buju, Kinamage Nene Erlen Indigenikas, and welcome to this production of the My Math Network. Today's episode, Chapter 8, Lesson 4, Problem Solving. Our featured strategy, guess, check, and revise. We'll begin today's session with a review of the homework from our previous session. And remember, we were using the greatest common factor to simplify fractions into their lowest terms. For instance, on this problem here, we knew that four went into both four and 12, so we divided top and bottom by four. And when you do this, you must divide the numerator, which is at the top, and the denominator, or the bottom, by the exact same digits because two over two is a whole. If I cut a cookie in half and I give you both pieces, you've eat, you're eating two halves. So let's look at it. Number one, eight ninths, that's simplified. There's nothing that will go into eight and to nine other than one. Nine eighteenths, this one is gonna be one, three and nine. This one, two, three, six, nine, and 18. So nine is the greatest common factor. Nine divided by nine is one, 18 divided by nine is two. 26, 30 seconds. I could start by dividing top and bottom by two, which gave me 13 sixteenths, and that's as far as I could go. And our error here, Nicholas did not divide the numerator and denominator by the same value. You see it divided by five and by six. Melody did not use the greatest common factor. Then we have a vocabulary check. A fraction is written in the simplest form when the greatest common factor of the numerator and denominator is one. You see the other answers there. Let's move into today's assignment. So we can kind of see what we're looking at. You, you see our trusty understand, plan, solve, and check that we have once every chapter. And then we're gonna have five story problems that we're gonna probably have to, yep, guess, check, and revise. There seems to be common thoughts here. The essential question is how are factors and multiples helpful in solving problems? When we do this, the remainder of this lesson, you will need to be open to page 569 in your math packet. It's the lesson four, problem solving investigation. If you need to pause the video to grab that, you can definitely do that. Otherwise, we're going to move forward today. And we'll begin on page 569. And remember the expectation is that you will fill things in as we go. That way you're keeping up and we wanna have an artifact when we're done so that we can look back when practicing or reviewing to what we already know. In our first story problem, the Bactrian camel has two humps while the dromedary camel just one. Toby counted 20 camels with a total of 28 humps. How many camels of each type are there? So what facts do we know? Grab my annotation tool. There are 20 camels and there are 28 humps. And how many camels of each type is what we're trying to search. So go ahead and fill that in. So this is all part of understanding the problem. Before we can solve it, we have to understand what we're asking and what do we already know. And that's going to bring us into our next step here in just a second. Once I say that I'm gonna clear the screen, you should know that there's only a second or two. And then you, if you need to pause the video to finish writing something in, you can do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen. you'll see that we already said that. 
So the step two of the plan, your plan on everything today will be, I will guess, check and revise to solve the problem. There's a reason that this lesson is the strategy of guess, check and revise. So on every problem you're going to, wait for it, guess, check and revise. So hopefully you're ready to guess, check and revise. So now we're gonna to go to step three, the solve, because we've decided that our plan will be to guess, check and revise. And we know we have to have 20 camels. And the first step they tried was seven factory and camels. And those have two, so seven times two is 14. And that means there must be 13 of the dromedary camels. Seven times two is 14 plus 13 times one, which is 13, 27. But we needed 28 humps. So now we have to adjust. I'm one hump off, so I need to add a hump without adding a camel. So that means I'm gonna add one to the back tree and camel category. So now I have eight and 12. Eight times two is 16, plus 12 times one is 28. And there we are. So we have eight back tree and camels and 12 dromedary camels. Let's go ahead and write that in. And we should be used to guess, ch guessing, checking, and revising. We've done it with um, division earlier in when we had to figure out which digit to start our quotient with. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear the drawings. Let me see. We have the correct answer. And our check. So go ahead and fill this in. 8 plus 12 equals 20 camels. And 16 plus 12 equals 28 humps. So go ahead and fill that in. I'll give you about 15 seconds. And then we'll move to the top of page 570. All right, let me move forward. So now we're going to go to the top of 570. We're going to practice the strategy. We'll do this one together, much like we would do the guided practice. And we will assign you one or two for practice before you do the, the homework. So our practice here. Connor spent $66 on rookie cards and Hall of Famer cards. How much of each type did he buy? So, here I'm going to make this easier by just doing that Connor spent 66 on baseball cards. We know that rookies are four for six. And Hall of Famers are two for nine. So these are all of our facts. Here's how much he spent. Here's how much the rookie cards are. And here how much the Hall of Famer cards. What do I need to find out? How many of each type of card did Connor buy? You could paraphrase this. Like I might put RC is four for six. HOF, nine for two. When I'm writing my, what do I need to find out? I'm probably going to cut it off right there. How many of each type of card? If you need another moment, go ahead and pause the video. Otherwise, I'll move forward here. If you're pausing, do it now. And now moving forward. What's my plan? Don't tell me you've forgotten. It is guess, check, and revise to solve the problem. Guess, check, and revise would be good enough for today. So go ahead and write guess, check, and revise as if you didn't already know it was guess, check, and revise because all we're doing today is guess, check, and revise. So I guess I will check and then revise. Moving on. I need to solve it. Now this is where we're going to put in some work. And I don't have an answer key in front of me. 
but I know I'm going to spend $66. So maybe, and I have to buy groups of four. So I'm going to start at eight groups. So 32 cards, which is going to be eight times six, which is 48. And to get close to 66, let's buy four Hall of Famers, which is going to give me two sets times nine, which is 18. We add it up, 16. One and four is five plus one. Would you look at that? I guessed right. I don't need to check or revise. I simply guessed. Woo -woo. I'm double checking my math before I get too excited. And it looks good. Now, that was uh, just a sheer lucky guess. Um, if I had started out at wanting 28 of those cards, I would have had to make some adjustments. I'm all proud of myself now. Is that good? <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and clear my screen. Let's see what the book gave us. Yeah, 28 cards, I would have to get six Hall of Famers, that'd have been $3 too much. So Connor bought 32 rookie cards and four Hall of Famers. You could make a chart like this. Um, you could also do it how I did it which without the chart. And again, it was just sheer luck, I'll, but I'll take it. Is my answer reasonable? Yes, because 48 divided by six is eight. Eight times four is 32. 18 divided by nine is two, and two times two is four. Keep in mind, in many cases in the real world, you might skip the check, but it's good to at least give it an eyeball to say, okay, yeah, I feel good about this. Um, if it seems way off, that it probably is. So I'll give you about 30 seconds to fill this one in. And then we'll move forward. All right, let's go ahead and move forward. If you need more time, pause the video. All right, so you're going to try one. Um, bike path A is four miles long. Bike path B is seven miles long. If April biked a total of 37 miles, how many times did she bike each path? Remember your steps. Understand what you know and what you need to find out. What's your uh, plan again? If you didn't just say, Mr. Ireland, it's guess, check, and revise, then you maybe want to stop and think about guess, check, and revise. Then go ahead and solve it and kind of give yourself a mental check. Go ahead and pause the video and we'll see how you did. Let me pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's see how we did here. Four times on path A, three times on path B. Four times four was 16. Three times seven is 21. 21 plus 16, 37. Let's give you another practice. Ruben sees 14 wheels on a total of six bicycles and tricycles. How many bicycles and tricycles are there? Go ahead and pause the video. Don't forget to guess, check, and revise. And welcome back. And the answer is four bicycles and two tricycles. Mission. Let's bounce ahead a couple. I'm just going to randomly hit a few buttons here. Apparently, it doesn't want to go past number four. So I will cheat the system and move it. To 
to number eight here on the back side. Okay, it is not agreeing with me here. You know what? How about we try the homework? It is giving me an issue. Technology, it's beautiful. On the homework, remember to review your understand, your plan, guess, check, and revise. Do your solving and then check your answer. You have five story problems. Remember to read them at least twice. So make sure you know what your facts you have, what you're being asked, and then go ahead and do it. Remember your ways of submitting this assignment. You can put your name on the top of both sides and either scan or take a picture of it and send it to me via text or email. You may also turn it in at the next in-person session, or you may solve it and then put your answers in the attached Google form, whichever one works best for you. If you have any questions, reach out to me at mirelandandpsychchipschool.net. Hopefully you're having no problems with this. Don't forget to guess, check, and revise, and have a minute, Gijigad. Bama P.